for the love of science we do these things okay for the love of science we do these things because everywhere i look i just see natural science you know so this paper is 2021 science paper one physics gce and i'm trying to go through solutions to it i'm trying to go through solutions to it so we go to question one we answer our questions of the 20 i'll do section a as usual in three parts a one the following dimensions of a metal sheet were measured by a welder using different instruments uh, which instrument were which instruments were used to accurately measure the dimensions my answer is b you can use a meter root to measure this and uh, this but the thickness is very small and uh, this degree of accuracy can only be reached by a micrometer screw gauge my answer is a Number B, the following diagram shows a simple pendulum, bulb, string. What physical quantities can affect the period of a pendulum? My answer was B, the length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity, which is G. Not the mass or, um, or anything else, but B is our correct answer. Pen and paper, people. That's how I go. That's how I roll. Number three. Uh, the student weighed a student weighed a small amount of sugar crystals and found the mass to be 0. 0.568 grams after adding two small sugar crystals the mass was found to be 0. 0.571 assuming that the sugar crystals were identical what was the average mass of one crystal so i actually had to divide the difference after addition of those two crystals uh, the difference or the change in mass was this much three exponential minus three grams then since there were two of them, I divided that difference by two and it gave me this. So on average, the mass of each crystal was, my answer was A, 1.5 exponential 3 minus 3 grams. My answer was A. Number A4, I almost went off-road because I think I, did pay my, I didn't pay attention for a moment to, to see whether it was a distance or velocity time graph. Afterwards, I realized it was actually a distance. Then I had to wrap this part here. And even when I was calculating, I realized these values were so big, but you know, we tend to trust examination questions so much. And we tend to think we are the ones who have a problem. But in this one, I had a problem. Number four, the following graph shows how distance varies with time for a cyclist. Cyclist. Uh, cycli cyclists ride that lasted for 250 seconds what is the cyclist's average uh, speed for the whole journey look at that graph uh, the gradient of a distance time graph represents velocity the gradient represents velocity in this distance time graph at this point the velocity is zero because distance is constant therefore this person stopped here for 50 seconds from the 100th second to the 150th second for 50 seconds they stopped so the formula is this if they had stopped for 50 seconds, then you don't count this point when the velocity was zero. It was zero. It won't even matter even if you add it to the other velocity is zero. So you only count these points when the person was moving. Total distance moved is 300, of course, but time taken is 200, not 250, because part of the 250, this person had stopped. So my final speed here is C, 1.5 meters per second. Number five. The diagram below shows a car going around a bend at a constant speed. Which statement about the car is correct? My answer here is a force of constant size acts on the car towards the center of the curve. Okay, A force pulls the car towards the center. Which statement about the car is correct? C is the correct one because of course there will be a centripetal force pulling the car. Remember, centripetal force, grade 10 physics, the formula is centripetal force is equals to mass times velocity squared over r. R is the radius of the circular path in which that object is moving. Then centripetal acceleration is equals to, is this this? I can't remember, man, but this one is correct. You can, pr you can prove this one later on, but otherwise this should be centripetal acceleration. Um, number six, um, in a small hydrochloric, I mean hydroelectric power station, 20 grams of water flows through a vertical height of 15 meters in one second. If the efficiency of the power station is kisti and taking G10 newtons per kg, what is the power output of an electric power station? My answer was 1800 watts. Therefore, efficiency is equal to power output over power input times 100. My efficiency is kisti per cent 60 per hundred 60 over 100 power output i don't know that's what they're asking for power input i can calculate from what i've been given therefore my power input is um 
power is equals to work okay power is equals to work over time and you and me know to say work is equals to force times distance therefore this is fd over time the force is the weight of the water which is our um 20 kgs which is here this becomes 200 newtons so 200 times our height which is our distance becomes 15 it's already in meters time taken uh we've been given the time yes i think we're given the time um per second in one second so time is one okay so when you apply this it gives you three thousand that's our power uh, input so when you do your math there your answer comes out as 1800 watts number seven the following diagram shows four identical metals metal cans efgh whose outside surfaces were painted as ident as indicated equal volumes of water at a temperature of 80 degrees celsius were placed in the cans uh after five minutes in a cool room okay which metal can would contain the coolest water the initial temperature was 80 um degree celsius or centigrade my answer is f f is white white reflects heat therefore this water will not absorb any heat but instead since it's not covered it will actually radiate much of it and then lose much of it via evaporation my answer is f uh, eight a crest of water a crest of a water wave travels 0.4 meters in five seconds um, if the distance between two successive crests is 0 0.005 meters, what is the frequency of the wave? Frequency is number of cycles over time it takes for those cycles. We've been told that one crest, a crest only, not a cycle, uh, travels, um, uh, covers uh, 0 0.5 meters in five seconds. Therefore, if you include, if you include the, the, the what? the trough which is the other half of the crest because one cycle is made up of one crest and one trough if you include the other half it means this distance will half it will become 0 0.2 that is why i divided here because i'm considering a complete cycle so it becomes 0 0.2 meters meaning um a full wave is going to cover 0 0.2 meters in five seconds okay so this is what this results to therefore um, 40 cycles in five uh, seconds okay a crest sorry sorry about that one a crest of water travels 0.4 meters in five seconds if the distance between two successive crests this is our wavelength okay so you divide this distance that the waves can travel over the wavelength to simply know how many cycles are or are covering um, the two meters in five seconds the answer is 40 cycles when you divide that 40 which is the number of cycles time is five it gives you eight haze my answer is c look at that one a little bit close and you know what i'm trying or how i found the the eight haze number nine an echo sounder in an airplane receives an echo from the ground 20 seconds after sent after it was sent if the speed of sound in air is 33 meters per second how high is the plane above the ground my answer is D, because when you're talking about echo, uh, speed of sound, you're talking about sound going and sound coming, covering the same distance twice in the same time. So this time given is for going and coming, the distance is for going and coming, so the speed has to be calculated in, with consideration of the to and fro uh, movement. So I make D the subject from this formula and my answer comes out as the uh, 3300 meters, my answer is D. Um, number 10, the following diagram shows the formation of an image from objects all using a convex lens, not drawn to scale. Yeah. Uh, what is the full length of the, I mean, what is the focal length? Sorry about that one. What is the focal length of the lens? Uh, the focal length is 23 centimeters. And the fact that it's not drawn to scale, I did try to find the focal length using the lens formula and it gave me 24 point something centimeters. But from my from the diagram, it is 23. That is why I think that was indicated to say it's not drawn to scale. So the answer is 23. How did I know that all, uh, uh, all rays that are close to the principal axis, this is our principal axis, all rays that are parallel and close to the principal axis, like this guy here, are bended uh, by this by the lens such that they will pass through the first focal point So that's our first focal point and the distance from the focal point to the optical center is the focal length. So it's 23 
Number 11, uh, where is the image in the long, um, long sighted eye formed and how can they, can the defect be corrected? My answer was behind the retina and focused by the means of a convex lens. That's my answer. Long sightedness is caused by a weak lens or a small eyeball. Uh, a weak lens or a small eyeball can be corrected by a convex lens. Uh, number 12. Um, the following diagram shows the pattern and direction of the magnetic field between magnetic poles J and K. Which type of poles are J and K? My answer is C. The south pole is the pole to which the magnetic field lines are drawn to be uh, projected to. Okay, and the north pole is the pole from which the magnetic field lines are drawn to be imaging from. So the arrows are drawn to come from the north going to the south. My answer is C. 13. Two spheres are mounted separately on insulator stands. If both spheres are positively charged, which diagram shows the correct electric field pattern? If, the bo if both are positive, they will repel each other. And my best diagram, I think, was this one. This was my best diagram among all when I analyzed all of them. This one. They are both positive. See? Um, number 14. The diagram below shows a resistor connected to a cell of EMF of voltage 2. How much heat energy is produced in the resistor in six seconds? Um, energy, this formula is the same as um, uh, work, okay, electric work, where of charge times voltage. Work and energy are the same. The amount of work done is equal to the amount of energy that is transformed from one form to another. So uh, if you say work done is 12 joules, it means 12 joules of energy have been, has been converted to other forms. So the formula is one. So this is energy charge voltage in, in in our previous calculations and maybe have we done electricity okay we'll do in other videos but uh charge is equals to it okay so i replace the q with it here and then finally i is equals to um v over r from the formula v is equals to i r where i make i the subject Okay, so this one becomes like this. So I'm going to have V times T times V over R. V times V is going to be V squared times T over R. My answer comes as 4.8 joules. C. I can use other pathways, but it should be able to, we should be able to meet here, all of us. Number 15. A 2 kilowatt stove, 0.2 kilowatt television, and 0.1 kilowatt lamp are all switched on at the same time. What is the total cost of running these appliances for four hours at two kwacha per unit? Okay, two kwacha. So uh, the formula is cost is equal to unit times unit price. Okay, uh, I need to find the number of units here. So my number of units is units is equal to power times time. This is energy. Energy is equal to power times time or weight is equal to power times time. Power in kilowatts because we're talking about cost. But if we're dealing with any other calculation, power has to be in watts. But it has to be in kilowatts. So leave these. This is 2,000 watts, but leave it as 2 kilowatts. So you apply, you add all these powers, this plus that plus that, to give you 2.3 kilowatts, which is the total power, times the time in hours. But in other calculations, time, the SI unit for time is a second. But here we use the hour because we use appliances in hours not in seconds. You don't watch a movie and you even uh, look at how many seconds has passed since this guy shot the other guy. No, you look at hours. Okay, so our number of units is 9.2 kilowatts, so I plug it in there. Then the cost, unit price, UP for unit price. I multiply the two, it gives me 18.4 kwacha. That would be the cost. Uh, number 16, a small coil is connected to a galvanometer as shown. What happens to the pointer on the meter when the magnet is pushed into the coil? The pointer deflects to the left and uh, then go uh, returns to zero. They have just said the magnet is pushed in. I put, I put these arrows here and the poles here. The approaching pole creates a pole similar to it, and then meaning the other side will develop a pole which is opposite. Okay, and from there you can simply use your right hand grip, your right hand grip to simply determine the the what. The, the direction of current. Where your thumb points in the north, then these other fingers are pointing the direction of current in the solenoid. So current here is going upwards like that. The current is going upwards as my fingers. So meaning if it's going upwards, then this side it will go up, then, so meaning the galvanometer will actually deflect 
to the left in the direction of current and then once the magnet is in here and it's no longer moving then the galvanometer will come back to its position okay so my answer is a the answer is a um question there 17 which graph shows the voltage output uh, which graph shows the voltage output v against time uh, for an ac generator the answer is d it appears like a sine graph okay in your mathematics this one is a, a DC generator. This one is a, an AC generator. This one looks like a graph for a rectifier. This one, I don't know, man. It's from Mars. Okay, yeah. It's from Mars. I'm sure one of these examination centers has been to Mars and they brought the graph from Mars. Um, 18. Um, the following diagram shows the appearance of the screen of uh, um, an alternating voltage applied to the input of an oscill oscilloscope, the Sierra O. The sensitivity is set to 3 volts per centimeter. The 3 volts per centimeter, this one is simple. What is the maximum voltage? The maximum voltage is 12. If the sensitivity is set to 3 volts per centimeter, you look at the distances. You have been told one box is 1 centimeter. Look at the maximum, the peak of this box. This is our mean. This line here is our mean. That's our crest, our trough. So from this mean here, you have 1 two three four boxes and each box is what three centimeters i mean three volts so three times four will give you 12 volts that's your peak voltage in this that's your peak voltage question 19 my second last question radioactive iodine is used to treat tumors of the thyroid gland this is an answer to a previous question in this paper i think it decays by emitting beta particles and gamma radiation the beta decay uh, process is represented by the following equation you put iodine uh, which um, emits a beta particle to give you uh, this should be xenon this formula is for xenon uh, and energy which is ga gamma rays what is the nucleon number a and proton number z for the nucleus my answer is um, c 131 and then proton number 54 when an a beta particle is released uh, its release results from the decay of a neutron. A neutron releases a beta particle and remains as a proton. So the proton number will increase from 53 to 54, uh, such that the mass will remain constant, but the composition will change more protons and less neutrons by one. If two beta particles are released, then two neutrons will undergo decay to produce two protons and two beta particles. My answer is C. The last question here is um, question 20. A radioactive isotope has a half-life of 6,000 years. How much time passes before the rate of emission uh, from the sample of this isotope falls to 1 60th of the original value? Okay, there is no original value here, so you have to treat this as a whole. You have to use fractions, okay, more like percentages. So I drew this table to help me deal with this, this fractional way of, of seeing things, like abstract way of seeing things. Half-life quantity, okay, half-life quantity, when half-life at the beginning, when time was zero, just at the beginning, it was a whole or complete, the whole quantity. After 6,000 years, it went to half, whatever this amount was. After another 6,000 years, it went to quarter, to one-eighth, to one-sixteenth. Therefore, it took about 24 years because you have how many half-lives here? Four. After four half-lives, which is a total of 24 years, this quantity will go to 1 16th of what it is. So here, uh, the question says, how much time passes for it to reach this far? 24,000 years. Wow. If you are a human and you're 24,000 years, then you're not a human. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.